how many takes is it going to take post vacation me to get this intro right? My guess is like 25 takes. I think this is take number like 11 or 12 at this point. I'm fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome into today's reaction video and welcome back to Kaloween. It is movie number three of four for the month of October and today I am watching The Silence of the Lambs from 1991 for the very first time. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Kale and this corner of YouTube is where I watch movies for the very first time, react to them, commentate throughout the movie experience, and then I dump my thoughts at the very end. For this month, I decided it would be fun to dip my toes in the horror water. It's a genre that I do not have very much experience with whatsoever. If you have not seen my reactions to the first two movies, which were The Shining and Halloween from 1978, description, corner, go check them out. They uh, were a time. I had I had a good I had some good fun with them. Yes. The Shining and Halloween were my two choices for this month and I left the last two slots up for Patreon folks to vote and The Silence of the Lambs was put up against Scream and The Sixth Sense and it won by just a little bit. Scream actually had a good amount of votes so I have officially put that in the brain to possibly react to next Halloween next October or maybe dump it somewhere in the middle of 2023 just randomly. I'll be like, hey, I'm watching Scream because I want to. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who voted in that. And I am so excited to watch this movie because I don't know anything about it. The only thing I know is that I think Jodie Foster is one of the main characters because it looks like her on the movie poster, but I don't know if it is her or not. Uh, so I'm excited to find out. As always, I've not watched the trailer, I have not read the synopsis, I have not looked up the cast list, I know nothing. So I'm very excited to find out what the Silence of the Lambs means. I'm assuming it means something. Are there actual lambs in this movie? I don't know. <laughs> and as always, if you are someone who prefers to sync your own copy of the movie up with my full length watch along reaction, you can find that over on Patreon for just $2 Canadian per month. And with that, you get access to all of my full length watch alongs for every movie that I have put out on the channel. And I know lots of people prefer to watch that way, so I have made it very affordable for you to do that. And check out the rest of Patreon. I offer a ton more than just the full length watch alongs. There is quite a lot over there. So come join us over there. So this is my first movie reaction recording in like three and a half weeks because I've just been on vacation for the last two weeks. If you follow me on my socials or you've kept up with my community tab here on YouTube, I just spent two weeks being a tourist in my own home. I live in Alberta, Canada, and a friend of mine from the UK came to check out mountains for the first time. He's never been to Canada ever in his life, never seen mountains. So I created an itinerary that was very packed and we went to a bunch of different locations throughout the mountains in Alberta. We also hit up some locations in the prairies. We did dip into BC for a couple days and that was really fun. And it was just such a nice vacation. It was so good to unplug and not be on my computer or my laptop for basically 14 days straight. There were a couple exceptions. I did do a stream on Twitch on the last Friday, and I also, we popped on one night in Discord to watch a TV show with a friend. But otherwise, it was just my cell phone. And I would check YouTube comments periodically when I could. I'd log in and just kind of scroll through. I did read as many as I could and responded to as many as I could. Thank you for your comments on the last two horror movies this month. I really appreciate it. It was so great to just enjoy nature. We walked a hundred kilometers, like over a hundred kilometers in these two weeks. And that felt really good. That felt really, really good. I'm hoping to try and like keep that up on my own time. It'll be difficult, but I'm going to try because it felt really good. And before I press play, you might see a second doggo uh, in the background. Come here, Riot. Uh, this is Riot. I am watching him this week. And uh, he is the doggo of the family that watches my dog, Ella, for me whenever I need her watched when I go out of town. And they are out of town right now for a whole week, so I get this lovely boy. <laughs> hello. Oh, are you saying hello to the YouTube community? Do you want to speak into the microphone? Your mouth is right there. <laughs> he is the most handsome boy ever, and I love him. And he's not even a year old yet. <clears throat> oh, oh, hello. Okay, we don't need to chew my nose. <laughs> I love how my dog is just passed out on the couch this entire time and is snoring away and has not woken up at all. <laughs> so yeah, if I'm reacting to the movie and you see him like that, 
I, I just wanted to do a formal introduction for you all. <laughs> all right, intro is officially done and out of the way. It is now time to press play. Rated 13 plus, hmm. Okay, maybe this movie isn't actually as bad as I thought it might be. Ah, I was right, okay. Jodie Foster, did recognize her. Anthony Hopkins. Darling, Crawford wants to see you in his office. Okay, so she's not really out for like a casual run. This is like a, I don't know what this is. I'll find out though. Oh, based on a novel. Oh, I didn't know this was a book. I'll have to add that to my never ending reading list. Oh, I just noticed FBI Academy on her sweater. All right, Hooray! questions are answered. Oh. These photos are very graphic. They look like they've been flayed. Bill skins fifth. Bill attacks again, woman missing, leaving blouse behind. Your instructors tell me you're doing well. Top quarter of your class. I hope so. They haven't posted any grades yet. Well, the job's come up and I thought about you. We're interviewing all the serial killers now in custody for a psychobehavioral profile. Could be a real help in unsolved cases. Most of them have been happy to talk to us. See, the one we want most refuses to cooperate. I want you to go after him again today in the asylum. The psychiatrist, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal the cannibal. Here's a uh, dossier on Lecter. Copy of our questionnaire and a special ID for you. Um, excuse me, sir, but why the urgency? Is there some connection between him and Buffalo Bill, maybe? I wish there were. Is this like a test for her? And you're to tell him nothing personal, Starling. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. Just do your job, but never forget what he is. From a research point of view, Lecter is our most prized asset. And they're just sending her to go in and talk to him? You know, we get a lot of detectives here, but I must say I can't ever remember one okay. detective. Okay, okay. Will you be in Baltimore overnight? Okay. Because this can be quite a fun town if you have the right guide. <laughs> well, I'm sure this is a great town, Dr. Chilton. Shoot in the shot. My instructions are to Talk to Dr. Lecter and report back this afternoon. So Hannibal Lecter, I've heard this name before. Is this movie the origin of Hannibal Lecter or like the novel, I guess? Or I don't know anything about Hannibal Lecter. I just know I've heard the name. <laughs> I'm nervous to see what he looks like and how this interaction goes. If he attempts to pass you anything, do not accept it. This is do you understand me? He's speaking so fast about the do nots, do nots, do nots. If Lecter feels that you're his enemy, then um... Well, maybe we'll have more luck if I go in by myself. Yeah, maybe. I'll be watching. You'll do fine. Oh, I'm already feeling a certain way. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. May I speak with you? You're one of Jack Crawford's, aren't you? May I see your credentials? Certainly. Closer, please. Closer. Don't get near the glass. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm still in training at the academy. Jack Crawford sent a trainee to me. I'm here to learn from you. That is rather slippery of you, Agent Starling. What did Miggs say to you? You use Evian skin cream, and sometimes you wear all at it all. But not today. Did you do all these wrongs, Doctor? That is the Duomo scene from the Belvedere. All that detail just from memory, sir? Memory agent starting is what I have instead of a view. Perhaps you'd care to lend us your view on this questionnaire, sir. Oh, no, 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 no. You were doing fine. Ham-handed segue into your questionnaire. That wasn't going to be that easy. Do you know why he's called Buffalo Bill? Please tell me. The newspapers won't say. Well, it started as a bad joke in Kansas City homicide. And they said, this one likes to skin his humps. Why do you think he removes their skins? It excites him. Most serial killers keep some sort of trophies from their victims. I didn't. No, you ate yours. You send that through now. Oh, he's like so friendly. 
but so creepy at the same time. Agent <laughs> Starling, you think you can dissect me with this blunt little tool? Good nutrition's giving you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor white trash, are you, Agent Starling? Okay. And that accent you've tried so desperately to shed, pure West Virginia. What is your father do? Is he a coal miner? Does he stink of the land? You see a lot, Doctor. But are you strong enough to point that high-powered perception at yourself? Why don't you look at yourself and write down what you see? A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. You fly back to school now, little Starling. Uh, uh, uh. I bit my wrist. Look at the blood! Gotcha! Me! You stupid fuck! Hey, Dan Stanley! Hey, Dan Stanley! Go seek out Miss Moffat, an old patient of mine. M O F E T. Go now. I don't think Mitch could manage again quite so soon, even though he is crazy. Go now! That was so chaotic. And also, ew. Ew, ew, ew. That was what I thought it was, right? Hi, Bill. Aw, flashback. All right. Did you get any bad guys today, Daddy? No, Angel, they all got away, Daddy. Starling? Miggs is dead. The orderly heard Lecter whispering to him all afternoon, and Miggs crying. They found him at bed check. He'd swallowed his own tongue. Well, I don't know how to feel about this. You don't have to feel any way about it. Lecter did it to amuse himself. He mentioned a name at the end. Uh, any follow-up on her? I thought the yourself reference was uh, too hokey for Lecter, so I figured he's from Baltimore, and I looked in the phone book, and there's a yourself storage facility right outside of downtown Baltimore, sir. Oh, here we go. For 10 years, prepaid in full. So nobody's been in here since 1980? Oh, good. <clears throat> yeah, what are we going to find in here? Stuck. And yeah, that works. Stuck. Works until it doesn't, anyway. Hand me that flashlight, sir. Oh, I'm nervous. Mm. Okay, well, I was expecting like a whole storage room just full of corpses, but this isn't so bad. But what is under this giant flag tarp thing? Uh, is this like a. I can't remember the name of a vehicle that delivers a coffin. <laughs> a hearse? <laughs> Was that the door? Gross. Very gross. Hester Moffat. It's an anagram, isn't it, Doctor? The rest of me. Miss, the rest of me? Meaning that you rented that garage? Smart. Also, she's still very close to this glass. Your bleeding is that. How did you? It's nothing. Dr. Lecter, whose head is in that bottle? Why don't you ask me about Buffalo Bill? Well, do you know something about him? I might if I saw the case file. Well, why don't we talk about Miss Moffat? You wanted me to find him. His real name is Benjamin Raspell. A former patient of mine. I did not kill him, I assure you. Merely tucked him away very much as I found him. How did you feel when you saw him, Clarice? Scared at first, then exhilarated. Jack Crawford is helping your career, isn't he? Apparently, he likes you, and you like him, too. I never thought about it. Do you think Jack Crawford wants you sexually? True, he is much older, but do you think he visualizes scenarios, exchanges, fucking you? That doesn't interest me, Doctor. Frankly, it's it's the sort of thing that Miggs would say. <laughs> Not anymore. I've been in this room for eight years now, Clarice. And I know they will never, ever let me out while I'm alive. What I want is a view. I want a window where I can see a tree or even water. I want to be in a federal institution far away from Dr. Chilton. I'm offering you a psychological profile of Buffalo Bill based on the case evidence. I'll help you catch him, Clary. Oh, this is such a weird situation. You know who he is, don't you? 
Oh, he probably Tell does. Me who decapitated your patient, Doctor. All good things to those who wait. <sighs> Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, she had to die. Is she the next victim? Nope, don't like this. Jeez. Can I help you with that? We do. Sure. Uh, get in a truck and, and I want to push it all the way up to it. Say, are you about a size 14? Sorry. <laughs> Good. Back to field gear. You're moving out, you go with profit. Where? Found a girl's body down in West Virginia. Been in the water about a week. Looks like a Buffalo Bill type situation. Oh, is this gonna be her? Keeps him alive for three days. We don't know why. There's no evidence of rape or physical abuse prior to death. All the mutilation you see there is post-mortem. That's Frederica Bimmel, the first one. Her body was the only one he took the trouble to weight down. So actually she was the third girl found. This new one today washed up here. This movie so far feels very like CSI to me, so I'm really enjoying it. He's in his 30s or 40s. He's got real physical strength combined with an older man's self-control. He's, he's cautious, precise, and he's never impulsive. He'll never stop. Not bad, Starling. You haven't mentioned anything about the information contained in my report or Dr. Lecter's offer, sir. Considering it. That's why you sent me in there, isn't it? To get his help on Buffalo Bill? I just wish I was in on it, that's all. If I'd sent you in there with an actual agenda, Lecter would have known it instantly. It's fair. Are they really waltzing in on a funeral? And the police are here? <laughs> wow, take a picture, guys. Uh... Oh, whoa, I just got mega confused. Oscar. Dr. Eagles from the chapel. Yes, sir. Starling, we're back here. Okay. Okay. She was just having a memory. Got it. Of her father dying. Or her father's funeral. And now, please, go on now. Let us take care of her. Go on now. Yeah, we don't need, like, 12 men in here. It just crowds the room. Two of her fingernails are broken off, and there's... Uh, it looks like she's tried to claw her way through something. She's got something in her throat. When a body comes out of the water... Lots of times there's like leaves and things in the mouth. I don't know if that's what we're going to find, though. What is that? That's a bug cocoon. There's no way that could get way down in there like that. So on the movie poster, there is a butterfly. I'm thinking that that, you know. Victim skin removed, this time in two large diamond-shaped sections above the buttocks. Time coach, my move. No fair, you lured him with produce. Tough nuggies. Still my turn. Nice and slow, baby. <laughs> if the beetle moves one of your men, does that still count? Of course it counts. How do you play? Uh, 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 what do you do when you're not detecting, Agent Starling? Try to be a student, Dr. Pilcher. You ever go out for cheeseburgers and beer? Are you hitting on me, Doctor? Yes. <laughs> gotcha. What do you got, Rudy? Agent Starling, <laughs> meet Mr. Acherontia Sticks. Only live in Asia. Asia? In this country, they'd have to be specially raised from imported eggs. Uh, somebody grew this guy. Fed him honey and nightshade. Damn. Kept him warm. I was just thinking, are we in this guy's house? Why won't you answer no. Me, no, 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 no. That's not good. First, as a missing person, is now believed to have been kidnapped. Oh, it's her. Young Catherine Martin, as we've said, is the only daughter of U.S. Senator Ruth Martin, the Republican junior senator from Tennessee. Just moments ago, Senator Martin takes this dramatic personal plea. I'm speaking now to the person who's holding my daughter. You have the power. You are in charge. That you're big enough to treat Catherine better than the world has treated you. Boy, that's smart. Release her unharmed. Is he even going to say that, though? This is the number for the U.S. Attorney's Office. Please. I think you discuss this with him, or you let me do my job. You understand? Nice. 
profile helps us catch Buffalo Bill in time to save Catherine Martin. The senator promises you a transfer to the VA hospital at Oneida Park, New York, with a view of the woods nearby. Maximum security still applies, of course. A copy of the Buffalo Bill case file. This offer is non-negotiable and final. Is this going to be good for him? Is he going to be up for this? I don't know. Quid pro quo. I tell you things, you tell me things. Not about this case, though. About yourself. Nope. Quid pro quo. Nope. No, no, no. Yes no. Or no. No, 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 no. What is your worst memory of childhood? Don't answer him. Death of my father. No. Tell me about it and don't lie or I'll know. One night he surprised two burglars coming out of the back of a drugstore. They shot him. Very strong. He lasted more than a month. My mother died when I was very young, so. This isn't good. Oh, no. Me, I had nothing. I was 10 years old. I think it would be quite something to know you in private life. Quid pro quo, Doc. She had an object deliberately inserted into her throat. Is it a butterfly? Yes, a moth. Just like the one we found in Benjamin Raspail's head an hour ago. The significance of the moth is change. Our belly wants to change, too. You're so close to the way you're going to catch him. Do you realize that? No. Tell me why. After your father's murder, you were orphaned. What happened next? <sighs> I went to live with my mother's cousin and her husband in Montana. They had a ranch. How long did you live there? Two months. I ran away. Did the rancher make you perform fellatio? Did he sodomize you? No. He was a very decent man. Quid pro quo, doctor. Billy is not a real transsexual, but he thinks he is. He tries to be. I wouldn't be surprised if Billy had applied for sex reassignment at one or all of them and been rejected. Our Billy wasn't born a criminal, Clarice. Billy hates his own identity, you see, and he thinks that makes him a transsexual. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> okay, okay. I want to see my mommy. Please, no. I called Senator Ruth Martin. She never heard of any deal with you. They scammed you, Hannibal. There never was a deal with Senator Martin, but there is now. Trying to figure out what he's doing. Who is Buffalo Bill? His first name is Lewis. I told the rest of the senator herself, but only in Tennessee. And I have a few conditions of my own. <laughs> Gosh, this whole story is so interesting to me. I'm really enjoying it, and I'm curious. I have no idea how this is going to end. And I'm not finding it scary. I'm finding it just more intriguing than anything. He looks so different with this mask on. <gasps> Here, sir, use mine. The pen. Oh my god, the pen. Senator Martin, Dr. Hannibal Lecter. I brought an affidavit guaranteeing your new rights. I won't waste your time or Catherine's time bargaining for petty privileges. Buffalo Bill's real name is Lewis Fenn. Apparently, Lewis had murdered a transient and done things with the skin. We need his address and a physical description. Tell me, Senator, did you nurse Catherine yourself? What? Did you breastfeed oh, her? Boy. Now, wait a minute. Yes, I did. Toughened your nipples, didn't it? Oh, oh son of a bitch. When your little girl is on the slab, where will it tickle you? Take this thing back to Baltimore. Five for ten, strongly built, about 180 pounds. Hair blonde, eyes pale blue. He'd be about 35 now. He said he lived in Philadelphia, but may have lied. He's so... Oh, and Senator, just one more thing. Creepy. <laughs> Love your suit. <laughs> oh, my God. It's only through my own unique insight into Lecter's mind that this breakthrough was possible. Okay. And Buffalo Bill... Oh, she's smart. <laughs> I love his cage. Wow, they gave him a desk and everything. Good evening, Clarice. I thought you might like your drawings back, Doctor. Or did Jack Crawford send you for one last wheedle before you're both booted off the case? No, I came because I wanted to. 
people will say we're in love. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Your anagrams are showing, Dr. Lewis' friend. Iron sulfide, also known as, as fool's gold. Well, I've read the case files. Have you? Everything you need to find him is right there in those pages. What is the first and principal thing he does? What needs does he serve by killing? He covets. And how do we begin to covet, Clarice? We begin by coveting what we see every day. Now, please tell me how. It is your turn to tell me, Clarice. You don't have any more vacations to sell. Why did you leave that ranch? You went to live with cousins on a sheep and horse ranch in Montana. And? And one morning, I just ran away. What set you off? I heard a strange noise. What was it? Some kind of screaming, like a child's voice. I crept up into the barn. And what did you see, Clarice? Lambs. They were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lambs? I opened the gate to their pen, but they wouldn't run. They just stood there. I took one lamb and I ran away as fast as I could. Where were you going, Clarice? I don't know. I didn't have any food, any water, and it was very cold. I thought if I could save just one, but he was so heavy. The rancher was so angry, he sent me to live at the Lutheran Orphanage. Postman. What became of your lamb, Clarice? I killed him. And you think if you save poor Catherine, you could make them stop, don't you? You think if Catherine lives, All right. you won't wake up in the dark ever again. Title of this movie is finally making some sense. I get it now. Very clever. Thank you, Clarice. She has divulged way too much personal information to this guy. Let's go. It's your turn, Doctor. Out. Tell me his name, Doctor. Your case file. Goodbye, Clarice. Oh, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know how to feel about that. I feel like Hannibal almost has, like, magical powers <laughs> in some, like, strange way. He's just really good at, like... I don't know. Knowing things, I guess. I don't I I don't know. Nice drawing of uh, Clarice with a lamb. Ready when you are, Doc. Son of a bitch demanded a second dinner. Lamb chops, extra rare. And what he wants for breakfast. Oh, this isn't going to be good. <sighs> I love the piano in this whole scene. Brady, Howard, cover the Look! Stopped. Seal off a 10 block radius. Oh! oh gosh. Oh God. Whoa. And now I'm worried about Clarice because, oh, she told him so much about herself. Sergeant Tate, he's alive. What do I say? It's Jim Pimmer now, <laughs> talk to him, damn it. Wait. Good job. Oh, you, you look real good there. Oh, yeah, wait. Good. Never mind. So now I wonder where where Hannibal's running off to. I assume to Clarice, maybe? Remember, you're gonna make it. Right. You're gonna make it. Just fine. But all right. <sighs> We're losing him. Oh, God. We think he's on two. Oh, no. For the elevator. There's a gun by his hand. He's not moving. One of the leg. No flinch? I have no idea what to think right now. God, I would not want to be the gentleman <laughs> to be the one to open this. <laughs> oh gosh. Nope. Oh god. Uh, vital signs are good. Pressure is 130 over 90. 90. Yeah, that's right. Nine. It's. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, and the uh, patient is on 10 liters of oxygen. Okay, remember when I shouted, wait. <laughs> I did that because I was like, 
oh, that's Hannibal Lecter. But then I didn't trust my gut. I was like, no, it can't be him. But it fucking was him. Oh, my God. Oh. He would consider that rude. No, he would not, miss. So, he, he is coming to you. Doesn't this random scattering of sight seem desperately random? Desperately random? What does he mean? Or even found in random order. Random because of the one girl. Uh, Frederica Bimmel. Uh, from Belvedere, Ohio. What did Lecter say about the first principles? Simplicity. He covets. How do we first start to covet? We covet what we see every day. You know her. <sighs> this is good. This is really good. Oh, I wish I had trusted my gut, thinking that that was Hannibal, but... I looked closer at the skin and then I realized that it was the officer's face with like the biting here. But I knew it. I did know it. I just didn't trust myself. Mr. Bimmel? That's me. Went into Chicago on the bus to see about a job. She never come home. Her bedroom is how she left it. Is she going to find a clue in here? I wonder. I feel like this is going to be something. Were they related? Maybe he himself a woman's suit, Mr. Crawford, out of real women. And he, and he can sew this guy. He's, he's very skilled. We know who he is and where he is. We're on our way right now. Where? Calumet City, edge of Chicago. Subject's name is Jamie Gum, a.k.a. John Grant. I need you to link him to the Bimmel girl before he's indicted. See what you can dredge up in Belvedere. Yes, sir, you bet. We wouldn't have found him without you. Nobody's going to forget that. At least about me. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the scraps, asshole. Well, I got a better idea. Clever. Don't think it's gonna work though. Who do you fuck with? I fuck with. <laughs> yeah, dog's too smart for that. Did you two ever work together? Or? Oh sure, me and Pam Malavese used to help her do alterations for old Mrs. Littman. So powerful. So beautiful. Down here, you sack of shit! <laughs> nice, she got the dog down. Put her in that bucket. No, you give me a telephone and lower it down here now! I hope this is the right house. I'm gonna do it, mister! <laughs> All right, right house. Good afternoon. Um, oh. Sorry to bother you. I'm, I'm looking for Mrs. Lippman's family. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I really need to speak with you. Clear! Clear! Oh, no. She's by herself. Getting the death of Frederica Bimmel. At the actual no here, house. Clarice. Your name is? Oh, uh, Jack Gordon. Well, Frederica used to work for Mrs. Lippman. Did you know her? Was she a great big fat person? Yeah, she was a big girl, sir. I miss. No, I, I read about her in the newspaper. Mrs. Lippman had a son, though. Maybe he could help you. I got, I got his card in here someplace. So, do you want to come in while I look for it? May I? Yes. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And is Hannibal like on his way here because he knows also where this guy is? Probably because we can't forget about him. Take over this place after Mrs. Lippman died. Is that right? We bought this house uh, two years ago. Tax forms. Just look behind you, girl. Look behind you. <laughs> she knows. She knows, and she's here by herself. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Here's that number. May I use your phone, please? Sure, you can use my phone. Freeze! Put your hands over your head! Put your hands in the back, thumbs up. Freeze! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Keep going, keep going. Although maybe you should wait until, you know. 
help arrives. I don't know. You know they're all on their way there because he was like, ah, Clarice. So they know. Oh, which door? So many rooms in this basement. Oh, God. This is not good. This is not good. lights come back on when she did that <laughs> oh all right dead good job let me guess she's gonna keep precious now <laughs> she better dog didn't do anything wrong Clarice M Starling congratulations okay we need like an update on Hannibal before this movie ends, right? Right. Phone call. Excuse me, John. Starling? Your father would have been proud today. Don't forget your phone call. Mm, this Starling. phone call? Well, Clarice, have the lamb stopped screaming? Don't bother with the trace. I won't be on long enough. Where are you, Dr. Lecter? I have no plans to call on you, Clarice. The world's more interesting with you in it. So Why did it... Care now to extend me the same courtesy. You know I can't make that promise. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Bye. Dr. Lightroom. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, the security system all set up. We have been being shut <sighs> Look behind you once in a while, guy. <laughs> I'm impressed that he got all the way down here, but I assume Dr. Lecker would be smart enough to be able to forge documents well. The end. The end, the end, the end. All right. So that was The Silence of the Lambs, and this is a super easy four out of five stars for me. Probably will end up rating it five out of five after I edit the reaction, possibly after a second rewatch. This is a good movie. So far, this is my favorite of the movies that I have watched for Halloween. so I'm very interested to watch the final movie, Psycho, just to kind of see how I would rank them all. I will say that I would personally not even consider this a horror movie at all. Like, it did have horror aspects to it, but this was very much a thriller for me, and I really enjoyed that. Like I said during the reaction, this movie definitely felt very CSI for me. I would say, like, the first half or even the first two-thirds basically up until the point where Hannibal escaped. Felt very CSI to me. I loved the investigation side of this. I loved Clarice and Hannibal's conversations and her kind of like interrogating him and trying to get information. Thought that it did such a great job at building up to then the final half, last third of the movie where I feel like, oh my gosh, it really ramped up and kicked into overdrive and just the suspense and the discomfort and the tension was awesome and unreal and it was just so good it was so good in that last bit the way that this story was written delivered and the way that this movie was paced was just really well done and i enjoyed this movie straight from the beginning all the way to the very end 
there were no dull moments for me whatsoever. I also love that I didn't know what was gonna happen and then when I thought that maybe something was happening a certain way, I like didn't trust myself even though I was correct. <sighs> Still kicking myself for that one, but that's okay. The reveal of it was worth it. The reveal of it was so worth it and it was worth it to, to have that and go, oh my God, I was right instead of, I don't know, just waiting for it to happen, I guess. In wikiing this movie, I have now come to learn that it is not a standalone film like I thought it was. I did not realize that this movie is technically kind of part of a series and there are more Hannibal movies. So I am going to add them to my watch list. Not sure if I will ever react to them for the channel. I'll probably end up watching them on my own time. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in more reactions, but for now, they're on the list and will be watched eventually. I also didn't realize that this movie is so critically acclaimed. Like I knew that this movie was popular. I've known about it for many, many years and I know that people like it, but I didn't realize how many awards it had won and I didn't realize just how like favored it is amongst the general population. Now that I'm sitting here like processing and reflecting on the movie, I can completely understand why it won so many awards and why it's so critically claimed. And I think that that's so good. That's awesome. For how brief the conversation was about the lambs, the fact that the movie is titled the way it was, I think is really good and really clever. And it kind of means more than just that conversation that was had too. Uh, and also, I don't know what else you would call this movie if not The Silence of the Lambs. With respect to how this movie was filmed, I really enjoyed it and the close-up shots on pretty much everything, but especially faces, was really well done. And there were certain scenes where we were getting that close-up shot of Hannibal Lecter's face that just like really freaked me out. And I mean, we can talk about the close-ups of both Hannibal and Clarice. The fact that both Jody and Anthony just had such wide eyes was just, it added that extra creepy factor combined with like just having the camera so close to their face or zoomed in on their face rather. It was just really good, really well done. I loved all the zoomed in shots. I thought it was great. And the other zoom in shot that really stands out to me is the nipple shot <laughs> on Buffalo Bill. So this was my first Anthony Hopkins movie. There have been, I think, two of his other movies that have been on Patreon polls in the past, but the movies did not win. So I definitely want to see more Anthony Hopkins films, especially knowing that he obviously plays a wide range of characters with different personalities. I think getting like the Hannibal out of the way first, probably better, <laughs> but we'll see when I move on to some of these other movies. I know that he's in a really... Uh, well-liked romance movie and I know that he's in Bram Stoker's Dracula which was on a poll a while back so very excited to check out more of his films and I also think his American accent is really good because I do know he is Welsh I think. I think that Anthony did a very good job as Hannibal Lecter and the character itself is written really well because to me the scariest people the absolute scariest people in the world are the people that do terrible things but can hide it really well and they are smart and well-mannered and really well spoken because i feel like those qualities in a person just kind of naturally make other humans more trusting like if you tell like if you talk to someone who's a really great speaker they have good manners they're smart they're knowledgeable they're polite like naturally you just feel like you can trust them right and that's who Hannibal is he's someone that comes across like I mentioned it during the reaction but I'm just like he's so friendly but yet he's such a terrible human being and those are the scariest people to me I'm just making an assumption that that's probably a big part of why Hannibal is considered such a great villain and such a terrible person or such a well-liked but terrible person you know like just a really solid villain uh, because being smart and knowledgeable and well-spoken and well-mannered, it like, it humanizes him a bit. And you almost think for a second, like, wow, like, are you really this monster that murders and eats people? Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just interesting to think about. I suppose charismatic is another, is another word that I should have used because I feel like Hannibal did have a little bit of, char of charisma to him. And I think that's a big reason why Clarice ended up divulging so much information to him like I mean yes at the end of the day she wanted to get to the bottom of this investigation and she wanted to do her job 
but she was explicitly told not to give him personal details and she ended up doing that. And I think that Hannibal's charismatic side and his polite and friendly and smart side kind of like, you know, hooked her in a bit and maybe let her guard down. And then maybe she thought like, oh, it's not a big deal if I divulge like, you know, some specifics about my past and who I am. But yeah, just I love this kind of villain. So it was really awesome just getting to watch a character like this unfold. I think Jody was wonderful as Clarice and I really enjoyed watching Clarice from beginning to end and just seeing her go through this story and her character was great. I really liked her. What I especially loved was all of the moments that really highlighted how she was like the only woman in this very male dominated FBI industry. Like scenes that stand out to me that like first scene where she walks in the elevator and she's like super short relative to all the men that are surrounding her. That was just a very like visually impactful scene. And then there was a scene later on where the camera was focusing on all of the different men and the men were looking at the camera, but you knew that they were looking at Clarice and just like, you know, staring her down. Uh, she was hit on by like, what, two or three different men? I can't even remember now, but there was conversations repeatedly happening in that aspect. And I just love that kind of to wrap up this whole story, she was the only one to make it to the correct address. Meanwhile, like a ton of men end up going to the wrong house. And she's the one that ends up on her own, killing Buffalo Bill, rescuing Catherine. And I just, I thought that was great. I loved it. And in addition to that, I just want to like honorable mention the moment where she realized whose house she was in, like, like, you know, cause obviously she didn't expect that she was going to come face to face with the actual killer. So the fact that like, she's questioning him walking through the house and then all of a sudden she sees that moth and it's like, whoo, ding, ding, ding. Like you could see it in Jody's face. She acted that so well, just that moment of realization where it's like, holy shit, this is the guy. Oh my God. <laughs> it was a great scene. Loved it. And then a giant highlight of the entire movie where she is walking around in the dark, panicking in absolute terror and fear. And Buffalo Bill has the night vision goggles on and is basically just following her, trying to grab her, wants to kill her and then doesn't. But that whole scene, the way it was filmed, the way that Jodi acted that was really, really good. And I felt very scared for her in that moment. And I had no idea what was gonna happen. It was a great scene. Wonderful. So yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. This was great. I'm so glad I finally watched it. I'm excited to rewatch it when I edit this. I'm excited to rewatch it again on my own time whenever I do that. And to wrap up this review and recap, I am going to read a handful of Letterboxd reviews that I just looked up and laughed at a lot. So here we go. First review, five out of five stars. Hannibal's parents naming their child like Herderer. No. Kidnapper? No. Terrorist? Mm -mm. Parsonist? No. Hannibal. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> the next review, a four and a half out of five stars that says, where were all the lambs? Minus half a star. As always, if you want to keep track of all of the movies I've seen before, you can follow me on Letterboxd at letterboxd.com slash KL, link in the description and the pinned comment. And that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for joining me today and watching this reaction. I really appreciate it. As always, please comment below and let me know your thoughts on the Silence of the Lambs. I'm sure that for those of you that have watched this 20 times, you probably have dissected the scenes way more than I could after a first watch. So I would love to know your analysis and what you think of this movie. Do you love it? Do you not care for it? Are you a five out of five star? Do you prefer other things? What do you like? What do you not like? Let me know. And if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. You can click right here. You will get notified of future uploads. And if you want to watch one of my other reactions, click over here. One will populate for you and you can go and check it out. Thank you again so much. I appreciate you all. Thank you for spending your time with me and have a great rest of your day. Take care.